Hi everyone, it's Natalie here. Quick brief update uh, on life and then just processing through something that has happened as a result of the difficult things that are going on that are that's interesting and will, I promise, be relevant to tarot, to the tarot. So um, for those of you who probably don't know, and I'm just gonna pull out a pack of cards and we're gonna just flip through them. I filmed this like four times now and every time I do it, something gets screwed up or um, when I tried to do it face on, it was a disaster. The mo cards are out. We'll do the mo cards. Um, you know, it was a, a little bit of a disaster because uh, the audio went weird. I don't know. It was just weird. It just didn't work the way I intended. And then I ended up showing all kinds of addresses and people's names that shouldn't have their names and addresses and old phone numbers and things shown. And so it didn't go the way I planned. So I'm refilming it. All of this is to say, um, life has been a uh, one tower moment after another in a wheel of fortune pattern. <laughs> just keeps cycling over and over and over again for the last couple of months and I am not exaggerating just to give you a sense of what I'm doing this week on Sunday my mother fell and has a concussion um and it's severe and it knocked her unconscious and it was horrifying and it was at the old house that I just moved them out of it was their house of 40 years and I moved them out of it to prevent that sort of thing from even happening that happened Sunday. Um, I was not going to even try to go to work Monday um, because I just needed a minute to catch my breath. That didn't happen because the doctor I work for was in horrific pain. We had a fully booked day. She needs to get a crown replaced. You get the you get the gist. Um, so I went back in. In the meantime, my godmother is in the uh, nursing home. We've moved her several times. She had pneumonia uh, at the end, like uh, end of May and nearly died, didn't die, lived through it, uh, couldn't walk, couldn't take care of herself, nursing home, uh, nursing home first, number one, terrible, horrible experience, moved her to the second one. Within the second one, we're running out of her Medicare time. So uh, we are now moving her to a more permanent long-term care room. And she's also now got dementia, which good for her. She was able to kind of mitigate and or hide or mask for a very long time um and i really do mean good for her because i think if we'd known she might not have had as good a quality of life as she was having um you know like i think she suspected it but didn't really know for sure um but we now know that she has it so that means that she calls and serial dials me multiple times a day leaves a voicemail each time and most of the time it's just calling to tell me about little things that are annoying her irritating her because i told her she can call when she has a bad day but since she found out she was moving she's also now meddling and calling everyone she knows and trying to get all of them involved so there's this drama <laughs> from which I really could use a little parasol, you know, um, at moments. Uh, so it's been like staying on top of all of communication and like trying to help with her anxiety and then getting all of, you know, it's been a nightmare. Uh, anyone who's ever dealt with a family member that's got dementia understands exactly what I mean. Um, she's a sweet, loving human being. I adore her. I am her POA um, because she doesn't have children. So my sister and I are in charge of taking care of her and we are doing our best. Um, but it means every single weekend uh, at the moment and oftentimes during the week, I've had to be with her in the hospital a few times now, um, all while doing a course. I've been finishing a course uh, and all of the coursework and it's just been a lot. Um, so this week has been managing all of that. I then asked if we could get a little bit more time on the Medicare so that we could deal with some insurance related things and finish like selling some of her stuff so that we have the money to actually keep her there and make sure it's okay. And the social worker did not understand what I meant and thought I just needed more help getting paperwork turned in. And so then the move went from being in my mind postponed for a while to um, happening now. <laughs> which is exactly what I was trying to avoid. So it's happening tomorrow. 
Um, I took the day off today to regain some sanity because I'm also moving my tiny house for the very first time ever. Um, an hour away from where it is now and it's kind of a nightmare um, scenario, but it's actually gone okay. That's actually why the mow was out because I wanted to consult the mow about it. Um, I will let you know how that works out, but um, I'm feeling much better and I have a little bit of time before Tom gets home. So I wanted to film this because I keep trying and I filmed the subsequent videos after it and I haven't been able to actually get it uploaded. So in the middle of all of the things I'm just talking about, um, my mom and dad have moved out of their house of 40 years. We had a buyer. Um, the buyer came on board in December through a friend of a friend and put a contract on the house in January to move in in July, which is great in theory. It's great, um, except that what ended up happening is that she pulled out of the contract 10 days before she was set to move in. So, uh, and part of the contract was that she was going to finish cleaning out the house herself with her husband and, and family. And so that so did not happen. You know what's appropriate right now is the graveyard oracle because holy cow. Um, and I think she's about to do a Kickstarter right now, so that might be good timing for her. Um, yeah, so that basically meant that we, oh, it's upside down, that we um, could not get on with what we needed to get on with uh, because, or, or be done with it because now suddenly we have to put this house back on the market. Um, and that means cleaning it out and that meant putting in a new septic tank and um, going through all of our old belongings of the last 40 years and longer because we have family records that amazingly managed to survive um, the War of 1812, <laughs> um, the uh, Civil War, uh, etc. And so we've got all of those family records. It's like, well, if nobody else's uh, fire took it out, then like, who are we to throw it away? It needs to be archived or something. Um, so yeah, there's all of that. And uh, it's been a nightmare. I will not, I'm not sugarcoating it. I am more fit in some ways than I have been in a long time because of the teaching of movement and then um, which involves a lot of yoga and running around and then doing all of the heavy lifting because I have lifted more heavy boxes and slept and spent all weekend um, for months. Uh, it seems like moving my parents. It started in February and it has never really finished entirely. Um, I'm hoping it'll be finished within the next week or two. But in the midst of all of that, what I did was come across um, some old stuff of mine that I completely lost track of. And it took me back to a time in my life where this card amazingly um, is exactly how I felt. Like my heart had been completely ripped out of my chest and I was utterly vulnerable. Um, and really uh, in a terrible egoic place. So I had been now, I will preface this by saying the school that I'm about to reference talking about is the very one that I just finished teaching for and I love going back and teaching there and I tend to form a really good bond with the students um, because, you know, we have a lot in common. Uh, having gone to the same school, it's in the same building, on the same floors, in the same areas. I mean, it's insane. It's so cool. Um, only I'm now I'm not 20 anymore, 18. I'm a lot older. <laughs> but it is a lot of fun. Um, but at the time, it was not because I, I was thrown out of the program. Um, it was something that they did every, you know, every year group had to go through this kind of weird thing at the end of their sophomore year um, where they would get cut and or have to go through cuts process. And I did not make the cut. And there were 30 of us or 28 or 28 of us. Six of us got cut and I was one of them. 
And I think the year afterwards, or the year after that, it was very soon afterwards, it was spawned by the year I was in, that they said, we have to stop this. This is, you know, it's a tradition that's, we're done. And they've been done. I mean, it's unbelievably um, relaxed, comparatively speaking. It's still not relaxed, right? But in an updated way, in a like non-abusive way, it's like way more relaxed. Um, and they don't cut people anymore, which is cool. But you can imagine that after an experience like that, um, it felt like uh, it was a social death um, of sorts. It was an emotional death of sorts. It was very painful, um, very distressing. Um, and yeah, I felt, God, that's a good card, isn't it? Who is this? Temptress. Ooh, it's a siren. Um, I felt really vulnerable, as I was saying, and a little bit rebellious too. Um, but very, uh, like I'd been shredded. I just felt shredded and raw and uh, damaged beyond belief. And like, I was a really horrible person or there's something wrong with me. And so what I did um, was to uh, attempt to repair my own ego by bolstering it and getting all kinds of certifications and esoteric things. Cause I felt like at least I'm good at that. I'm good at writing. Cause I was, I was a literature major after that. I was like, I'm good at writing and critical thought, and I'm good <laughs> at the very opposite. <laughs> um, I'm really good at divination and woo. So I got all of these different certifications and things, but among those um, was a certification with the American Tarot Association. And um, as I was going through that old journal and paperwork, and I have some of it here that I will show you in a minute, um, what I found was that my original mentor, now let's see, I'll back up a minute. I gotta, I gotta be like, and roll it back. So lately speaking, I have seen this deck show up on a number of people's channels. And I kept thinking, I feel like I know that deck. I feel like I've seen that deck somewhere before. Not because I had it at that time, because I did not. but. I thought, how do I know this deck? This is a deck I have seen many times. Where would I know that deck from? I like that deck. Julia Turk, isn't that, why would I remember her name? Hmm, that's weird. Anyway, on and on it went. Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't remember what the association was, but I thought it was cool. I was, I was looking at the deck, like um, when people would show it. I think Benabel maybe even reviewed it recently. I don't know, it's been showing up a lot. And then I found my old book, okay? And in my old book, what I found in there was, and I'll, let's put these to one side because now I'm distracted. Um, what I found was uh, my American Tarot Association info. And I'm gonna do this part off camera because I kept screwing it up royally when I was doing it earlier and it was just a shit show. Um, of addresses and names and stuff. This part is safe. I found my, my stuff for the American Tarot Association. And as I was flipping through it, I remembered my former um, mentor. Because when you start in there, they give you a mentor, or they used to. I don't even know if, if it exists anymore because I haven't even checked on it uh, before doing this. Um, what I've been reconciling is other parts of it. Um, so I remembered her name was Dawn. I remembered that she she was really lovely that that we got on like a house on fire that she was a british person living in the u.s um and she was a professional tarot reader and i thought she was freaking amazing um and so i really really wanted um to learn from her and um and to work with her and i'd forgotten that i had at one point switched mentors from her um, or sorry, from someone before her. Now, let me just, this is the part where I got to move this so I don't show any addresses that I shouldn't, um, including my own old one. I realized going back through all of this stuff that my original mentor, um, 
where is that paper? I don't know. I didn't mark it. Uh, no, those are from the forum. Gosh, what a, what a maroon. Bottom line, in case you're worried, like, where is she going with this? Um, the mentor that I originally had on that course was none other than Julia Turk. Uh, and I keep thinking at some point, I'm actually going to find those emails. And the thing that I found so horrifying about those emails was that um, here I had been given this extraordinary mentor, and yet I had no ability to really appreciate her or appreciate her intelligence or wisdom. Okay, I found it. So look at that. And I even wrote here at the top, whoops, at the top, get a copy of. And I remember, like, I opened this up when I just, when I saw it here, I don't know, a month ago, and read Julia at mysticsea.com, the navigator, and thought, Oh my God, is that the same Julia Turk that, you know, um, that I encountered with, is that the same, is it the same one? Is it, is that Julia Turk? And it is, um, it is, it's extraordinary. Um, and here's the thing. I was not in a position at that time, um, to really take in the value of who she is and what she can offer. In fact, it, you know, what I discovered when I reread a lot of the emails uh, back and forth, which are in many ways almost too painful um, to really share or go into, although I didn't bother to cover them up or hide them. So if you're really that curious, you can obviously stop at the video, um, you know, roll it back and look. But I was horrified um, that, in retrospect, I could have had this incredible mentor that I now would have valued and treasured, but I was in such a place, I mean, she was, I didn't understand, you know, she was working with this weird, she, she created this weird deck. Um, you know, my friends, we may as well flip through it a little bit, even though I've made other videos coming up where we do more of that. Um, but, you know, my friends were like, I, you know, my best friend that taught me to read was like, that's evil. Her decks are weird. That's just weird. It has weird energy. It has a weird vibe. Because she was not, you know, just, we. it was just a different day, a different time, you know. Um, and, you know, come on, we were young. Um, I was very naive in, in every possible way, but of course, because I was 20, 21, 22, somewhere in there, I, I thought I knew everything, right? So, um, because when you're that age, you think you really do. I mean, everybody else is dumb and they don't know shit. So you really do think you know everything. Um, and I was so full of arrogance um, and self-righteousness and hubris that I really couldn't take her in. And when I reread some of what she wrote, she was so kind and so sensitive um, and gentle and yet direct. And honestly, I'm horrified by that. I'm horrified by my behavior and so on. And so it made me want to get the deck and, uh, and go back and just look at that and kind of think through like what is you know what was that I mean the interesting thing to me is that I also had unsurprisingly become a bit of an internet troll um that was the day of the old forum style things in fact I think I can pull out one of those pages I will be done with this soon by the way sweetheart okay um so yeah I just Oh yeah, here we go. Oops. Yeah, we had, you know, there it was like, we had like a forum thing. 
you know, where people would, would, you know, post stuff and then you'd print it because if you didn't print it, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't real. It didn't happen. You couldn't save it. You couldn't go back and reread it later. Um, we did all those kinds of things and I was a troll. I was really, I, I turned into a troll in the early days of the internet in my early twenties. Yeah, I was a stinker. Um, getting into really lengthy discussions with people that were basically about showing off like I know this and I know that and just that kind of behavior and I'm horrified in retrospect like who did I think I was good god I mean that's how how horrifying how embarrassing um <laughs> you know just really awful um and not at all who I would want to be or who I really even was and then I remembered like it really was temporary because I did have a couple of friends who really put me in my place and said, you know, you've really become a piece of work um, in recent months. And I don't care who you think you are, you're not going to talk to any of us like that. Um, and I'm grateful to them for that because had they not said anything, who knows. But I also remember when I got to drama school, that shifted as well because suddenly then I was in a different environment and, you know, humility became a natural aspect of, of being there um, and re-engaging with the work from a different place. And, uh, yeah. So, I don't know. I'm just kind of still processing that time and kind of understanding, like, why I was not in a position to take, I mean, Julia Turk, you, you know what I mean? Like how, how stupid was I at that time? I could have had her as a mentor. Um, and whereas now I would jump at that opportunity, like leap head first and um, love every minute of it. At that time, I was too full of arrogance and hubris to really understand the kind of blessing and gift I'd been offered. Um, yeah, so I just, uh, yeah, I'm just kind of processing that. I'm just processing that. I will say I no longer feel, um, especially now that like, this was not so much the case when I initially tried to film this video, obviously like anytime I try to film it, there's always an interruption, but, um, you know, it was... Wow, I've totally lost my train of thought. Um, Cause things have been like that. I don't know. I don't remember what I was trying to say. I don't know that it really matters that much. I think I was just, uh, the ba the main point was just kind of trying to understand like what, what is it that causes, you know, what is it in the ego's wounding that causes us to strike out like that? Um, <laughs> you know what is it in those tower moments that um prevents us from pausing and taking a breath and just saying okay before i start trying to repair my ego um and 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 gatekeep that's where we came from is gatekeeping that's where we were all of the videos about um the gatekeeping and um who's a real tarot reader and who isn't a real tarot reader is laughable to me at this exact moment because of course we were having that dialogue in 1998 and 99 on that website <laughs> on that um it wasn't even a website at that time I don't even remember what we were calling it it was like you know like a chat group or chat room um and it was a very lively debate. And it was one that I was determined to win because I was so attached to being right about everything. So attached. Um, and I will say, I, you know, has my certification as a tarot reader really served me as a tarot reader? I don't know. I mean, I guess on some level it did, but I don't think it's in the way that I would have thought it would at the time. You know, did it give me a certificate and a letter next to my name and all that? Sure. And I long since lost that certificate in various moves, you know, internationally and stuff, but along with my Reiki certifications and everything. 
but um, what it did do is at the time it, it, it fed my ego something that I needed that was missing. Um, and so as I look at the gatekeeping that's going on right now and the kind of conversation about who is or isn't a real tarot reader, you know, the Natalie today would say, sure, get a certification in tarot if that makes you feel better. Um, just make sure you study with somebody that's worthy of your, you know, of your time and interest. Um, and looking back, I can say, you know, the people that I studied with were definitely worthy of my time and interest. Um, if only I had been in a position to really appreciate just how much that was the case. Um, I don't know. Would I do it over again? Absolutely. I don't think I'd bother with it today. I don't think people need to do things like that unless it makes them feel better, like I said. Um, I don't think it makes you a better tarot reader or, or not. I think practicing and doing it is what makes you a better tarot reader. Um, reading with the tarot makes you a better tarot reader. Um, I'm not really sure what a fake tarot reader really would be even. Uh, but in terms of the ego, in terms of the ego, um, I can tell you I I don't feel as though the first 10 years that I read tarot I was really reading it compared with the way I feel about it now um, in terms of the depth and the insight and I don't know the beauty of what's available in it so I don't know I think it's one of those things but yet I also I don't think I wasn't a good tarot reader. Um, I don't think I was a fake tarot reader, but I definitely had a lot more stake in it and being good at it. Now I just do it. Um, and I'm much more concerned with my own integrity uh, around the way that I read for people or about the way that I communicate. Um, so yeah, I don't know. But I'm still, I'm still a little sore, you guys. I'm still a little sore about the whole, about all of this. So I got the deck and upcoming videos are gonna be about that. I got the deck, I'm fascinated with it. It's actually freaking amazing. Of course, of course it's a freaking amazing deck. Um, I found this unbelievably on Amazon for super cheap. It's not bad at all, so um, all the details about that will be either un in the box below this one or in the box in the next one. But just know that's coming up. There's there's going to be more with this. It is based kind of in Kabbalah and Thoth. So um, I've got uh, two decks that I want to compare it with and look at. And I just kind of want to get to know better this amazing mentor that I could have worked with. But for whatever reason, did not have enough ego strength to really understand or see or or be able to even have a beginner's mind about so anyway thank you for being here and helping me process that i'm going to now go and eat dinner with my dear and um i will see you again soon bye